Man, you're like bleeding now. Reality's really messed you up. Wonderful. No, no, no. Contrary to popular belief, I enjoy being alive. If you find any, I'd be extremely grateful. The legend! He's back! And firstly, I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up. Is that the phasmid? It looks like the phasmid, leaning against the wall. Wait, what if this is the fishing rod situation all over again? Fine, it's not a phasmid. It's not even organic. Just a fire iron resting by the fireplace. But where's your sense of wonder, man? Mister? Yes, I am. Little Lily. You know my mom? That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. Bye! Oh, the God of Dance is back! I'm dancing with the God of Dance! Goodbye, officer. Good morning, comrade! Yeah! Harder car! Yes, what is it? The creepy woman! We were wondering about that when we worked there. But I had completely forgotten about it ever since. It must be entrepreneurial crosstalk, the one you get in radios and long distance calls. Now it makes sense with the pale right on the doorstep. Incredible. This would also explain why we get it on the police radio all the time. It's quite common actually. When the signal gets routed through pale, all kinds of irregularities take place. You may hear snippets of someone else's conversation, or the voice of your former lover, or an echo of an event that took place 100 years ago. Pale is a shroud of memories, and it doesn't really distinguish to whom those memories belong to. You could hear anything, anytime. Yo, man, what's on your mind? Parkop. Ouch. I did notice you limping, but I thought maybe it was your thing or something. When I was 16, I used to date this guy who had a limp, but it only showed when he was sober. So I guess it wasn't real or something. I don't know. Anyway, shot in the leg. I'm sorry. Man, that must suck.
Allah. Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. You're not limping. You're you. Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint guilaine It's nothing to be worried about, madame. So you're a killer? That's good, I guess. I guess. Better than being dead. I... I've always taken you for one, that's for sure. Not a lot of RCM men who aren't killers. Of course. Can I help you with something? That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. I'm sad to hear that. Take care of that with Ether, will you? Don't get too many RCM men round here. Be sad to lose the first one. That's cool. You boasting your bacterial infection like that. Hmm. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. For the communards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think. Bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always steered clear of it. Hasn't been there herself. Who has then? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know. My mother told me. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do, on rafts. I tell them not to, but they bring back old bullet casings and such. The twins. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. Can we maybe ask your twins about that place before we go? Would that be alright? Be my guest. They have a strange way of talking. See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Well, most of it's sunken. Underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Aye, aye, Captain. If you promise to bring it back, and no scraping the hull, I just got it nice and yellow, and no drinking on the boat, and no joyriding either. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Aye. The crow's feet disappear from the corners of her eyes as she smiles at you. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Just filled her up, but it's a small tank. Scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Oh, that I am. That's um nothing. It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can take a raft there. It's great. And and we make a fire. We make a we make a fire. Mm-hmm. Gather the sticks for the fire. And bullets. Or oh, not real bullets, empty bullets. Bullet shells. There are a lot of them left over from the war. But this could be important. I don't know what those are. They're lights. 
The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. Your nerve endings sting from the mention of a guy. They must mean a human being on that island, but it's cut off. No. Yes. Let's go with yes. Because, because, because he asks to put the fire out. Um, I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. Yes. I... I don't know. Did you mean there are electrical lights? Um, yes. No, he doesn't live there. I don't think. No, he lives there. Been there twice, two times. Uh, he doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know. We, we ran. He just yelled, we shouldn't be there. Our father killed himself. Don't say that, he didn't. I'm sorry. There's a... Lights, fire guy. We should check up on that island. Man, you're like... The legend! He bottoms up, Captain! Man, you're like... bleeding now. Of course. Drink first, story later. Not much, but it will do. This last one is the most Martinet story I've ever heard. I've never heard it mentioned outside of here. At first, I thought it was a joke, to be honest. But I've been on the coast eight, nine months now, and in that time, I've seen at least three expeditions come through, searching for something. A shovel hits the sand somewhere behind the reeds near an abandoned construction yard. The young men look over their shoulders suspiciously. The sound of their digging seems loud in the sudden silence. Magic animals? No, man, this is serious stuff. No, Tequila. Most people already know where they live. It's guys like you and me that are the exceptions. Hey, hey! Fuck you, Tequila. All kinds. I've seen archaeologists, gangsters, even a bunch of ad agency types. I'm telling you, Tequila, this thing's got a pull on certain kinds of people. You know, obsessive types. People with predilections. Some of those expeditions come back after a week or so, looking haggard and dejected. Others don't return at all. The first time I saw one of these expeditions, I thought they were fucking with me. There was no way it could be true. It was just too high concept, even for me. I'm not even sure I should be telling you this story, to be perfectly honest. You're in a fragile state, and it might be too much for you to handle. Okay, fine, I'll tell you. But I'm warning you, it's pretty out there. Our story begins at a legendary design studio, right here in Martinez. There was this designer. His exact name is lost to history, but in life, he was a legend. Made it big in Aranya, where he did some real pioneering work on grotesque and sans-serif typography. A fucking genius, man. That is if he even existed. Who knows, it's an urban legend after all. Anyway, sometime later he started his own personal studio here in Martinez. 
And that's when he started working on some really wild stuff. I'm talking some glass-smooth, forward-looking design language, the kind of thing that would totally overthrow the old regime, design-wise. A paradigm-shattering revolutionary. But then, something turned. You see, it's widely known that nose candy and pioneer graphic design work go hand in hand. You know tequila, nose candy, the white railroad, party powder. The kids on the streets also call it snow day. Sinus salt, the white knight. Can't see for its popularity among the aristocratic class of the prior century. Along with a number of more banal street names, Glow, of course, but also Flake, Powder, Pearl. Really, anything that's white will get the idea across. He's talking about cocaine, baby. Shit yeah, Tequila. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've got to understand, the work this guy was doing was so high concept that regular amounts of cocaine just weren't cutting it. By the end, they were bringing it in by the lorry load. Now, as you might imagine, snorting that much cocaine can't be healthy for a regular human, right? Wrong. Do it all the time. All day, baby. Hey, Tequila, pay attention. The story goes that one day he was balls deep in work on what he thought would be his pièce de résistance, an advert so minimal it contained neither text nor images, just pure white. Apparently the idea was too high concept even for this genius. He dropped dead right at his desk before he could finish. His last words are recorded to have been, it's as white as a blizzard of cocaine. I know, Tequila. I know. <sighs> but the story doesn't end there. Supposedly, when they performed the autopsy, the coroner discovered nearly a quarter kilo of coke jammed into his nasal cavity. That's almost certainly anatomically impossible. Wrong again, nerd. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's right. 250 grams of blow had accumulated in there over the years. We're talking high-grade Saramaritzian pure. Not that cut-rate shit your grandma does. There are those who believe the designer was buried with this quarter key of nose candy still lodged in his sinuses. That's what those expeditions are looking for. The cocaine skull. The Cocaine Skull. No. Wow! Here's the kicker. This designer, this lead designer of a world-famous design studio, was born in Martinez. A local boy, Martin Martinez. That's why he brought his studio here, back to where it all began. And that's why they buried him here, too. Perhaps right under Ab's pipe there. Or probably further down the coast, or in some yard in Martinez proper. A hidden mausoleum, no one knows exactly. No, my grandma always told me his grave lay somewhere on the islets on the bay. This is ludicrous, and physically impossible. Sinuses can contain that amount of anything. Now, now, detective. Always the skeptic. My only question is, where does one get a shovel? The archaeologists say they want to put it in a museum, the gangsters say they want to sell it on the black market, and the ad agency guys say they're seeking inspiration. Bullshit. They just want to snort it. But you could beat them to it, Harry. You could snort the magic skull cocaine instead. I'm pretty sure they all just want to snort it, though. And why wouldn't they, eh? Sounds like right strong stuff. Don't listen to him or his grandma. He's just making things up. No, my grandma told me. I've heard other people say it too. That it's underwater. Or no, maybe it was the storm suit. 
Or maybe it's in the air, or in an ancient state pyramid of shore. In a pyramid? Now that would be something. They're pretty vague about it in general. The gangsters like to claim they're looking for the grave of a friend with picks and shovels. The archaeologists act all official about it, saying they're conducting serious research. Honestly, I think they're not really scientists, just rich. The junkies, for some reason, are pretty upfront about it. They just say they're looking to snort some blow out of a dead man's nasal cavity. Honest men on an honest quest. You should join them. By now, I'd say I know about as much about it as anyone on the coast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on just a minute. Finding it right now is literally impossible. What? For one, the way is blocked. By that big lorry that says Delta Logistics Company on the side. You definitely have to search the area behind that lorry too. Yet, it is impassable. And second, Outfitting an expedition like that is expensive. It'd have to be a big production to do the cocaine skull justice. You need new gear, people who know what they're doing, all kinds of provisions. It's just not feasible within the economic and temporal frame of our current setup. Matter of fact, unless a bunch of money just falls out of the sky, we might never know what's up with that skull. I have to agree. We barely have what we need to solve the case we've got now. We can't afford to run around chasing after quasi-mythical pieces of drug paraphernalia. Besides, it would look extremely bad for the RCM to be caught up in something that has the word cocaine writ large on it. The PR is tricky on this. Wait, maybe there's another way. Maybe up around the coast? Don't give up now. Yeah, well, that's the reality situation for you. Who knows, though? Maybe someday we'll get our chance. Not that I can think of, currently. That might be the case. Yeah. Right. I've ma 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 magic all you know. Some of the f the you. I'm not okay. Fine. There he I'm any. But then you the keep some alone. He's you roll. Hey, per I know. But the st that wrong. That there are the cocaine skull. The cocaine skull. Here, that's all. Not this. Now, now, my only question is. Good thing, because I don't think you can find it right now anyway. What? For once, it's. I have to be. Wait. Yeah, well. My kind of guy. Here you go, friend. Graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. The fuel oil catches fire immediately with an ominous hiss. A bright orange flash across the surface of the letters. Black smoke rises from the burning message. The lieutenant has taken a small step back. He looks at your face illuminated by the flames and nods silently. Then the fire falters. The flames warn him too. Not at all in a bad way. Let's go to that island. Slowly, the flames subside, the fuel burning out. The air still smells of mazout and springtime.
Be careful out there. Seas calm as death, but still. There are ruins underwater. You can scrape the paint. Or worse. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle, and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. Special thanks to my patrons, Justin Wood, Hobbs, Coopy, Vegeta, Gunrunner, Water, and Bat. You can join my patrons at patreon.com slash Holden Gatsby, follow me on Twitter at Holden Gatsby, and follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Holden Gatsby. Don't forget to subscribe to both of my channels. Thanks for sticking around. Bye.